right, so in this video, I want to talk about a mental model called a black box, all right? Black box thinking. This is a very common term that's used in engineering, and I think the layperson would benefit greatly from having this in their box of mental models they can use to understand complex systems, which is why I'm making this video. So, this is the idea of a black box. The mental model of a black box allows us to temporarily reduce complexity by only looking in the inputs and outputs of a system. So if you have something that's very difficult to understand how something works, you can just look at the inputs and outputs of that system and then sort of infer how it works. When I use a black box approach to explaining a system, what I do is I first put the black box on it, like, hey, this thing is so complicated, we just wanna look at the inputs and outputs, and then once you understand why this system exists, uh, then we could talk about how the system works by, by exposing the black box and the internals of how the system works. All right, so you can do this with any system, right? I don't know how an oven works, but I know the input is food and heat, the output is cooked food. Okay, I don't know how clocks work, but I know the input is a battery, the output is motion and the ability to keep time, right? So this black box allows us to say, hey, I may not know how this thing works, but I know why it, why it exists because of of what it's actually doing. We could look at a car and say you put oil or gas into the car and the output is motion. A black box is a device, system, or object which can be viewed in terms of inputs and outputs or transfer characteristics without any knowledge of its internal workings. The opposite of a black box is a system where the internal components or logics are available for inspection. How is this applied to the videos that I'm making here about Bitcoin? Okay, so Bitcoin is just data. And because it's just data, it's intangible. Uh, it exists in this sort of spectrum of abstraction. When people talk about the blockchain that's fairly abstract, then you say like, okay, well, we're like, I'm sending you Bitcoin. It's a little bit more concrete. And it's like, hey, send me Bitcoin at this specific QR code. That's very concrete, All right? So as we scale up and down this abstraction hierarchy, the black box mental model helps us contain complexity as we're trying to talk about pieces of the system. All right, so you may not know how Bitcoin works, but I can tell you that it's like, you know, you, you put energy into mining and then you get some secure blockchain on the end of it, right? You don't know what any of that means, but when I start to expose parts of it to you, you do, right? You know why it exists when I give you the black box, you know how it exists as I expose details. So we can apply this to full nodes in mining. So in Bitcoin, we could say, okay, full node, the function of full nodes is to take in new transactions in blocks and then validate those transaction in blocks. Suddenly you understand why full nodes exist, right? They exist as validating entities in this system. They validate transactions in blocks. We have no idea what that means yet, but that's okay, right? The black box allows us to, 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 to first understand why we have full nodes. Then, in a later video, we could talk about how full nodes work. Okay, black box applied to miners. I are, sort of covered this a little bit three seconds ago. We have transactions validated in blocks. So these are unconfirmed transactions, uh, validated but not confirmed transactions going into miners. Somehow, with energy, the miners are taking these transactions and then confirming them in a block. Right? So without knowing anything about how miners work, we now know that their function is to confirm transactions in a block. Right? We see how this is a valuable mental model. So we, we can apply this to different areas of thinking in the blockchain. Right? So we have the block at the base of this, that it takes in validated transactions, confirms transactions in a block. We have transactions that take in UTXOs and then move that to a new address on the blockchain. We've got UTXOs that have a locking and unlocking script. So you take in, UTXO starts off as an input. So it's sort of like this unlocked value becomes locked value. You could look at it that way. Now this is very abstract. And then as we go to concrete, we can take this understanding and then move it to something like a block explorer, right? So the, the goal is learn the mental model, use the mental model to understand a part of a complicated system take that understanding and then apply it to something concrete in this system so we can actually have a skill, right? And the skill here is called learning how to read a block explorer. So now we understand what blocks are. We know that blocks are containers for transactions. We know that you know blocks are these entities that are confirming transactions by miners. We have a list of transactions in this block. It looks like there's over 2000 here. 
and then inside each transaction are a list of UTXOs, and the function of UTXOs is to block value on the blockchain. Whew, I think I went pretty fast with that and caffeinated this time. All right, cool. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you got something productive out of it. This is a mental model that we'll use going forward as you continue to watch videos in this playlist. If you like this video and you want to learn more about Bitcoin, you can watch the next video in this playlist and subscribe to this channel.